This is the Astrology Show podcast with Jessica Adams. Thanks, Shane. This is your Astrology and Tarot for the week starting April 22. Aries, well, an idea is just an idea until it is planted and can grow. This applies to a proposal, a thesis, a grand plan, a composition. You have Minerva with all her wisdom in your zone of brainwaves and proposals. The message is that this will grow and could grow, but it is in the wrong place at the wrong time. Having said that, there is ample room for research. And in fact, when Jupiter goes into Gemini, where Minerva is now from May 26, this could take off hugely. And by June 2025, you could be looking at a major success, the gift that goes on growing. The trick is the plan. Aries doesn't really like planning, but with Mercury retrograde at the moment, planning and research and homework is all to the good. This looks as though it's going to work, but as I've said, it's in totally the wrong place. So you or somebody else needs to find out where this is going to take off. Taurus, well, with Apollo in Cancer in your zone of big ideas, there is a question here about leadership. Apollo is a symbol of men who lead the way. So this may be you or a man in your world. The trick with this is to understand that procrastinating or putting things off until the last possible minute is not really the way because what is in hand does have tremendous potential, but it will fall on dry ground unless it's taken firmly in hand over the next seven days or the baton is passed. So this may be you receiving a concept or plan from a man who is delegating or sharing. Or if you are a male Taurus, it may be that it is time for you to call for assistance as you can't do this by yourself. What it is that's holding you up is a moot point. There is no question here about the leading qualities of the man in question, or you yourself, if you are a male Taurus. This is somebody, maybe you, maybe him, who has earned a lot of stripes, but without any kind of get up and go and a commitment to where this could grow, it's really not going to work. It's going to need more than luck. Gemini, Mercury retrograde is with us. And of course, that can mean that absolutely nothing happens. Being stuck, standing still or being suspended is typical. Meanwhile, a commitment is called for. Juno in Virgo is in your family tree zone. It's in your life direction zone in terms of where home or the base really should be. This may be your mother's side or your father's side or one side of the extended family tree against the other. But while you wait, you become enlightened being suspended or dangling, and your tarot card this week is the hanged man, is the key to understanding and growth on a spiritual, psychological and emotional level. Because you're forced to wait, there is nothing to do but work on the inside. And funnily enough, this is the one thing that helps you when it is time to choose. Cancer. Your fellow Cancerian, Diana, the Princess of Wales, famously said, there were three of us in this marriage, when she was talking about Mrs. Camilla Parker Bowles. Perhaps that is your issue this week, perhaps not. But with series in your zone of duets and duels, there does appear to be three people in the mix rather than two. You are one of them and you have to understand the part that you're playing in the scenario. It may be two parents and a child, for example. It is emotional, though, because Ceres is in the most emotional part of your chart. She is about compromise. We know very well that she stood for the relationship between son-in-law, mother-in-law and daughter. However it's panning out for you, when you remove yourself emotionally, mentally, maybe even physically from the situation, you leave the other two to it. That will create a critical turning point but the alternative is to stay stuck where you all are and that's no alternative at all. Leo, with this huge pile-up in Aries, the sign of travel and also travellers, this is one of those weeks when you're going to find yourself on the move or welcoming somebody from somewhere else. The stage is set and sometimes the best test of true feelings is the distance crossed. If you are a woman, this may well be a knight in shining armour, 
who has many rivers to cross. It really depends on if you're single or married, of course. If you're a man, it may be you who is on a mission. Your tarot card this week is the Knight of Cups, and that doesn't necessarily mean partnership at all. It can be a completely different sort of emotional bond between friends, say, or family members. But the key to your chart this week is the pile up in Aries, which is about crossing the bridge and closing the gap geographically. The welcome mat should be rolled out or you should be expecting it because what is here is genuine, sincere and solid gold. Virgo. Well, with Mars in your opposite sign of Pisces, you have to be quick if you're going to get rid of any potential conflict, and you can be quick on this cycle. You also have Apollo in your zone of groups, and that is about dealing with a group or a circle as much as being involved with it. I think it's more likely that you're on the outside of a group rather than on the inside. But if you do happen to be in a circle of people who are plotting and planning, you need to know that somebody else is much too fast for you and there will be no conflict unless you put your roller skates on and you really want a conflict. For most Virgo people, though, this is you acting alone and dealing with what we might call a preemptive attack. So using Mars in Pisces, you nip in and nip out of a situation and before anybody knows what's happened, you've removed any potential for future conflict. Libra. Well, the number of factors in your opposite sign of Aries this week is very high, and Aries rules justice. It rules the scales. So it rules me and you, or me versus you, and you have eight planets, asteroids, and other horoscope factors in your seventh house of the balanced scales. This may be you who is acting as a supreme authority in a situation where two sides must be levelled, or you may have to kowtow to a higher power or a very strong person who is in charge of it all. There is something about your tarot card this week, which is justice and the pile up in the seventh house of the scales, which suggests that it may in fact be legal for quite a lot of you who are listening to this. In other cases, there is some kind of higher principle or law that says fair is fair. There is so much weight behind your tarot card this week. It's probably right for you to accept and for the other side or the other person to accept too. Equality matters to your sign and so does symmetry and harmony. Scorpio, four factors in Pisces in your fifth house of children, teenagers and the young suggest that you can learn a lot from a younger generation. Neptune is in there too, so this is another world a bubble, and you would be familiar with the way that children and teenagers can insulate themselves from reality. They don't pay tax. They don't have to go to work. So this week they are in their own space, and that has to be respected and understood. At the same time, you have had Mars transiting this zone of your chart, and he is always represented by the tough man or the man going through a tough phase in his life. That means that Mars is on the way out and so is this man who may be your husband, your father or another senior male in the story. The children deserve to be children and the teenagers deserve to have their adolescence. This week it's time to do whatever you can to make sure they can do that in safety and security. Sagittarius, we have Fortuna, Saturn, Mars and Neptune in your zone of family and also a sense of place. So there are questions here about the family tree for you or another person. The family tree itself is shown very clearly in your tarot card this week, the Page of Swords. It is a tree being blown sideways and backwards, and it looks as though the branches may fall. This suggests a need for a bit of life gardening, and you or another person is definitely on the move to do that, as the situation could be left by itself, where it would clean itself up and new growth could begin later, or there may be a bit of action here. The family tree is in that zone of your chart where we also find where one comes from belongs, a sense of place, a sense of belonging to perhaps the past and certainly to the local area. And that's also moving and shaking with these transits. Everything's moving very quickly this week. It feels quite uncertain and unsettled for you or another. And yet this too shall pass. In the meantime, 
It is the family tree and how it is managed that is the main thing. Capricorn. Well, this week you have one thing and one thing alone to think about in terms of your memory of the past or your thoughts about the future, and that is a mother-child relationship. That is shown in your horoscope by the huge amount of factors in your sector of family life, parent and child. At the same time, when we look at you, there is a definite need here for repair and recovery, for rebuilding, resting and rejuvenating. You have had a very intense time with Pluto in Capricorn, your own sign. He's gone for now and Ceres is in Capricorn in his place. So this is all about you and you are allowed to take your time as you come slowly back to life. There is no other way of putting it. This really does feel like you're reincarnating or re-emerging the way that Doctor Who does from time to time. In the picture, very firmly in your tarot and in your chart is the importance of mother and child and how you process and absorb that is part of the story. Aquarius, with so many factors in Pisces, in your zone of money, business, property, charity and shares, you are not going to get through the week without an offer, a deal and negotiation. This may be you, in which case there is money to spend or invest, or it may be another person with whom you have to deal. Much as you'd like things to happen quickly, they never happen quickly when you have Saturn around. And here is this planet firmly in Pisces, in your zone of cash, cryptocurrency, shares, business, charity and retail, real estate as well. I have to mention that because in the background of your tarot card this week, we can see the family. This is yours, his or hers, and it is very much in the picture as this financial decision is being made. We have a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in your family zone now as you listen to this and ongoing, and that may be where this financial injection can go. Pisces, your inner life, your mind, your imagination and your ability to project are all in focus or rather out of focus because all of this can be so confusing. You have Pluto in your 12th house, so what is in your head can be powerful. In fact, it can be reality to you, even though it is not. This week could help you turn all that around as you are poised to discover that so much of what you want or so much of what you fear or even find toxic is all in your head. It's your memory of the past or your imagination about the present and the future. You are ruled by Neptune, the planet that we associate with the inner contents of the mind. And at the moment, Neptune in Pisces is making it very hard for you to get back in touch with yourself, but very easy for you to project out and make the mistake of thinking that it's all really there. It's not at all. And changing the slide projector in your head this week can go a long way to fixing that. Your tarot card this week can be decoded at my website. Aries, the Page of Wands. Taurus, the King of Wands. Gemini, the Hanged Man. Cancer, the Three of Swords. Leo, the Knight of Cups. Virgo, the Seven of Swords. Libra, Justice. Scorpio, the Six of Cups. Sagittarius, the Page of Swords. Capricorn, the Four of Swords. Aquarius, the Page of Pentacles. And Pisces, the Eight of Cups. Your natal chart aspects this week are triggered by the lineup in Aries. So if you do have Aries factors, this is all about your exterior. We find Cupido, Hygieia, Salacia, the North Node, Mercury, Isculapia, Chiron and Venus, all in Aries, all in the first house of your chart, which is about identity, your face, Facebook, your image, your reputation, self-awareness, your wardrobe, your accessories, your title, your head, the image reflected back to you by others, appearances, as I've mentioned, and the external. And an awful lot of your decisions this week are going to hark back to all of that. Babies born this week are biters and fighters by nature, and that will be the case even when they're little old ladies, if they're girls. Both boys and girls are strongly Aries, so be careful when they wrestle the dog because the dog may not always win. If it's your birthday, 
then you will make or save a lot of money from May 26, 2024 to June 9, 2025. You may inherit, sell your property or pick up a big contract or pay rise. Famous birthdays this week include Captain Sensible, who is 70 years old, on April 24. Nigel Harrison, who is 73, on April 24. Barbara Streisand, who is 82, on April 24. Kate Pearson, who is 76, on April 27. Enid Williams, who is 64, on April 28. Hello and happy birthday, Enid. And Kim Gordon, who is 71, on April 28. Fated connections are Taurus and Gemini, who must see an idea, a concept or a proposal planted on solid ground this week if it is ever going to take off. And now to a true prediction and a new prediction. The true prediction is about the Bondi Massacre and it ran on Substack and my website. The total eclipse on the 8th of April was flagged as a high-risk date for a cover-up and a blind spot. That is the exact date that the Bondi Junction killer, Joel Couchy, invited members of a Bondi Beach Facebook group to meet him for a surf. There is a photograph of Joel with a long shadow on the sand thrown by his surfboard. Something that you may have read is that eclipses and shadow photographs go together. It's a reminder that we, and sometimes they, the people in the photograph or the film, are completely in the dark. And perhaps Joel Couchy was. This is what I put on my website in March to warn about April 8. Quote, there will be a fresh start or a new beginning near April 8, as this is a new moon eclipse. Yet later on, you will realise how misled you were. The article on my website went on, an Aries eclipse and lone gunman shooters. Unfortunately, Aries is associated with the person inside the Facebook page, particularly if it leans towards extreme views. Joel Couchy had approached a gun group on Facebook before. He also arrived by train to Bondi Junction. What you read on my website was... If you see something, say something to people using a bus or train network right through March to June 2024. That message still holds until June because we are in quite a long Aries cycle. What you also read on my website, and it's still up there, unfortunately Aries, ruled by Mars, the god of war, is associated with the lone gunman and also the bomber. It is linked to terrorism and other acts of violence. Something else about Joel, he was interested in astrophotography, not astrology, but using a camera to capture the dark night sky. So I wonder if he was mindful of that April 8th eclipse. He lived with schizophrenia. His parents have been worried about him for a very long time. On any eclipse, we have the rule of three. On a total lunar eclipse, the sun, earth and moon are aligned and the moon goes into the shadow. On a total solar eclipse, the moon goes between the sun and the earth and the moon blots out the sun. This is where the idea of not seeing and not knowing comes from and it's why April 8th was so dangerous. The rule of three on a total lunar or total solar eclipse is that one person will be in the spotlight and take all the attention. Another person will be overshadowed or eclipsed. The third person will be completely missed by everybody. We cannot see him or her. We do not know him or her. The Westfield Bondi Junction tragedy put Dawn Singleton in the spotlight. Even her name, Dawn, is about the sun rising. Her father, John Singleton AM, is worth $820 million dollars. He is famous in advertising, radio, publishing and horse racing. He's a celebrity in Australia. Dawn Singleton's fiancé was a policeman, Ashley Wildey, who had the experience of being ordered to the shopping centre where his future wife had been murdered. 
In the rule of three, when we look at this tragedy, there are many people who could be playing one, two or three, but these three in particular seem a likely case. Now, when Mercury and Mars crossed the total eclipse point that we went through near April 8, we will know a lot more about what we did not know and could not see. So that's when Mercury goes to 19 Aries, and that's near Sunday the 5th of May, and it's where Mars goes to 19 Aries, so that's near Sunday the 26th of May. That tragedy was very close to me. I had worked with a woman who was alone with a killer on the day that it happened. She was trying to get help at the time. Bondi Beach and Bondi Junction are small places, and as you may know, we hold our astrology and tarot meetings at Bondi Pavilion. So when things are close like this, extrasensory perception or ESP kicks in, and maybe that's why it was possible to be so specific about Facebook for a start. Moving on to brighter things, literally brighter after an eclipse, we have a Jupiter and Uranus conjunction from April 18 to 26, when the planet of opportunity and solutions is in step with the planet of freedom. The two planets are in Taurus, the sign which rules deals and bargains. It also rules your economy and the world economy. If you have anything in Taurus in your natal chart, what happens from April 18 to 26 is radically different to anything that you've seen with your bank account so far. I have written about this and also made a YouTube clip about this as the Jupiter and Uranus conjunction is very big news. In fact, every astrologer is talking about it or will be. Do watch Russia. On the occasions in history that we have seen this line up before, Russia has always been at the heart of a shock. The most recent Jupiter and Uranus conjunction in Taurus was the 1941 offer from Hitler and his deputy Hess to Churchill. The deal was join Germany against Russia and we will end the war on Great Britain. Uranus is the last thing that you expect. Rudolf Hess flew a Messerschmitt from Germany to Scotland and crashed in a cow field before he could make his offer. Amazingly, he did so partly on the advice of astrologers. Hess used his horoscope to find the right date to make the offer to Churchill. Churchill, meanwhile, went to see a comedy at the cinema, a Marx Brothers film. In the end, Hess was jailed for life and the rest is history. Uranus is unusual, unique, unconventional, unlikely, and so will life be around the world from 18th of April to 26th of April. It started last week as you listen to this, and we are recording this on the 17th of April, so I'm just one day ahead of the cycle. It's my belief, which I have no proof for, except a photograph that you can see in the video, that Rudolf Hess walked into a trap set by British astrologers working with British intelligence, MI5. In the YouTube video about the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, you can see an original photograph of Churchill with a man called Brigadier Roy Charles Whitworth George Firebrace. Now, Firebrace passed away in 1974. He co-founded the Astrological Association of Great Britain and he was high up at the Astrological Lodge of London. In the photograph, he's literally Churchill's right-hand man, standing on the balcony of 10 Downing Street. As we go further back in time into the story of Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus, we find Russia starring twice more, once in a massive trade and land deal with China in 1858, and even further back in time again with the fall of Kiev in the year 1015, which later became part of Russia. So we have to ask, what will this new Jupiter and Uranus conjunction in Taurus do again with Russia? History and astrology tell us it will be unprecedented, highly unusual, and it will bring about ongoing change for all of us. In your life and in all our lives, Jupiter and Uranus are the big answer and the big shock. In Taurus, that is the world economy, as I've said, but in your own chart... 
your solar chart or sun sign chart, this is also going to have impact in one area of your life. I've written about this on my website. And again, it's in the YouTube video if you want to catch up. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next week. Bye.